Hey, it's Dave Wyman from Danny, Dave, and more. It's time for Football 101. And since the Seahawks are getting ready to face Richard Sherman and the San Francisco 49ers, I think everybody's had this game circled on their calendar just because the way Richard Sherman left, what he meant to this team. And later on, we'll talk about how, how you feel about it. But Tampa Bay versus San Francisco from last week found a couple of plays. And, you know, I was watching Richard and just thinking, man, he doesn't really look like himself. I know he had the Achilles injury from from last year, but there's a couple times where he got beat and I think the Seahawks defense and the receiver or offense and the receivers Can have their way with him a little bit. He just uh, again He doesn't look the same in Tampa Bay first quarter with 1025 left Mike Evans right here beats him on a little out route and uh, he goes down the the sidelines just a nine route basically, but the thing that happened on this was that Sherm is usually really good with his hands, getting up there and jamming the receivers, and he missed them. And Evans kind of stuck him inside, and he bit on the fake, and then he was able to get outside along the, the sidelines here and gets a, a throw and goes for about 40 yards. And, you know, I was like, wow, that did not look like Richard Sherman. I know that, you know, look, DBs get, get beat all the time. I know a lot of people are worried about Shaq Griffin right now. And, a couple of those plays, yeah, he's, he can do better, but on a couple of them, he had his arm in there. And it's tough. It's tough playing cor corner. This is the second hardest position in the NFL next to, to quarterback. So you're out on an island, and, you know, Sherm, we always expect so much out of him, but uh, he's not really getting it done right now. And then uh, with the 45 seconds left in the second quarter, he got beat inside. Now, you're supposed to funnel it. That looked like what they were running was cover two. So that means that the deep part of the field is protected by the two safeties. And what you're supposed to do as a corner is jam him so that he goes inside. But he broke, the receiver broke inside so clean on him. And again, Sherm didn't get his hands on him. He was able to beat him inside and then just sort of creep out this way away from the safety. And he's supposed to kind of settle back with him so it's not in this what they call a cover two hole shot and that's what quarterbacks are trying to look for is hitting it in between the corner and the safety getting there guy was wide open they didn't end up seeing him but I just it just it really stood out to me that Sherm doesn't really look like himself how will you react when Richard Sherman comes and leave your leave your comments because we're going to be talking about it all week and I'm kind of in the middle. Uh, I really, I obviously am a little bit biased because he went to Stanford also, and I loved what he brought to this team. And if you talk about, I think in 2012, 13, fans really appreciated him because he talked a lot of smack, but he backed it up. And I think they liked that. And, but he did leave on a sour note and kind of criticized. We've heard him not being a fan of Russell Wilson and, uh, and also talked about Pete Carroll a little bit. So I'm just curious, leave your comments if you're going to boo him. The other thing, the other question that we're going to pose this week is who would you like to see beat Richard Sherman the most? And, you know, Taylor Jacobs, who uh, is, is puts this whole thing together every week, he said, how about Russell Wilson stiff arming uh, Richard Sherman and, you know, just pushing him to the ground and running past him? Or how about Jessamyn McIntyre came up with, how about George Fant? George Fant, the big offensive tackles reporting, is eligible now a lot in, uh, in these games. And maybe the slowest guy beating him would be the best way to get back at him. But, and I'll, I'll tease ahead to story time on our show, Danny, Dave, and Moore, at 5.30 before every game, whether it's a Friday or, um, you know, if we have a Thursday game, it'll be on Wednesday. Tell a little story about being booed. I was booed roundly, and it was uh, kind of an interesting feeling. So when Richard Sherman comes out on the field, will you boo him, or are you going to appreciate everything that he's done for this franchise?